at TammyTryerTryerWilderness.com. It is a glorious day here, and I couldn't stay cooped up, so we are outside here. As long as the skeeters don't start eating me alive, we'll stay out here. Um, sorry I'm a little late. I had to do some um, assisting on making sure our delivery arrived for our materials for our job, and um, they just got here, so I'm off the hook. Good morning, Chad. I'm excited about today. I have all kinds of good questions for you guys today, and I want to real quick invite Miss Mona and Charles. But how are you guys doing this morning? Good morning, Miss Shelley. Yes, I'm glad you can join me, girl. Let me just get these invites out quick. Bear with me one second here. Just want to. Here we go. And there we are. Those are sent. Okay. So, good morning, Diana. Good morning, Courtney. Ah, oh, awesome. So glad to see you guys all this morning. I did not know what I was going to do today until about 15 minutes ago. So, I think this will be fun. Papa's guiding, of course. Good morning, good morning, Miss Kelly. I'm so glad you and Courtney can join me. It is such a wonderful day, and I know that so many of you are, I knew what you meant, sister. <laughs> I realize that so many of you guys are dealing with weather issues, so talk to me. Um, I know Kelly has been dealing with some weather issues. Many of you have had a lot of rain. Um, we've been fortunate that, um, our weather has not been too awful bad. Last week we got rain when we were working on the truck, um, but we've had nice weather. And I gotta share this little bit of a celebration with you. It's, it's really funny to me. Um, you know, the second half of our uh, talk today is God's perfect timing. I have been planting flowers here on our homestead since we got here. I love growing things. I love plants. I love flowers and just watching things grow. And I've been planting things every year and nothing took. Well, the same has applied to our grass. Our grass has been, our time here has been an adventure all the way around. I could write a book on that and I probably will. I have many in the works, but we'd work on our property. This was all overgrown wilderness. It was thick and ugly and it just looked so beautiful this year and things would break so our yard didn't get taken care of. Um, as it needed to, it would end up, you know, knee high before we could get to it because the weed whackers were dying and we didn't always have a lawnmower. We did initially and then a tree fell on it. So, and then we got a hand-me-down and so it's just been kind of interesting. And our yard always looks like it's dead. You know, you mow it once or twice and then it's just dead. It gets very dry here. And uh, what's really awesome is we've got a beautiful green yard. Our, our, it just looks like a park here. And all of my flowers that I have planted over the years bloomed this year. Is that not awesome? I just think that's so cool. So not only did I get to enjoy them, but anybody looking at our home will get to see the beautiful um, flowers also. So many of you guys are having things to say here. Um, I saw heat mentioned below there, and I think that was Shelly that mentioned it. And it was 48 degrees here this morning. I just peeled off my, my uh, fleece and, and my uh, flannel. Uh, it's it's awesome it's perfect mornings and you know last year like June I said it started feeling like fall already it was really crazy we had such an early setting of fall last year and it's just weird our temperature the weather is weird everywhere I know you guys can uh, share on that looked at the hay Kelly says and praise the Lord it is still green on the underside just need heat and no rain praying girl and I, I ask everybody else to uh, lift them in prayers because Kelly has had the best year of hay on their property, and uh, it's three ton, right? And it's been rained on like four or five times now, and their weather is constant rain right now. So it is a blessing that it's green underneath, and we're just going to keep praying that she is able to utilize this hay and it doesn't go to waste. That's such a shame, but God has a plan, and we always have to trust that, and I know you know that girl more than anything. 
and Shelly says praying for heat. Diana says very hot here in the 90s for the next week and high humidity. Yuck. I agree. I do not miss the humidity, not even a little. And Shelly, okay. We had 34 degrees a few mornings ago. Good morning, Miss Tammy. I have a cat joining me. Yep, underneath me, thank goodness. Um, last year, if you guys remember, I was trying to do uh, a, one of these lives when the cats were little and they were the one just kept jumping on me the entire time. It was hysterical. So, it's just amazing how God blesses and the things God does and the things that we get to kind of chuckle at and, and enjoy ourselves. And I want to just remind you guys to keep your eyes on the prize, keep your eyes on the blessings because... Life is always going to hand us oddities. And when it gets really good, you know that there's an oddity on its way. And you know, last week, poor Mountain Man, he worked from Saturday to Saturday on that truck. And it was a constant new situation. It all started out as a brake job and it ended up being calipers, ball joints, tie rod ends, stabilizers, rotors. I'm trying to think what else. And then we needed new tires and an alignment. Good morning, Miss Cammie. So, it, oh, and he broke um, his uh, torque wrench and a two-foot uh, breaker bar. It was crazy. Um, the stuff that goes on sometimes. And um, I, I believe we were under some pretty heavy spiritual attack last week. Uh, my mother-in-law... Her mother, or Glenn's grandmother, and I were fasting and praying, and I think we stirred the pot a little bit, so poor Glenn got the brood of it and the brunt of it. Um, but the thing is, through all that, it's awesome to watch him um, maturing in his faith. Um, it's just a, it's a known fact. Men um, tend to get angrier quicker than women I would like to say and and deal with and we all deal with our our struggles differently and it was just so awesome you know we've gone through a lot here so he has progressed to such a level of just you know it is what it is trusting God for it and just you know just rolling with what comes your way and it makes life so much easier and so much more pleasant um, but it doesn't make it any easier and it's the same with Kelly's, um, hey, Copper, leave her alone. <laughs> copper, you're too big to play with the cat. Sorry, my Rhodesian is, I should probably stop when I turn the camera, but she, yeah, right, Copper, leave her alone. Come here, come here, come here and lay down. Okay, it's like kids, you know. So it's like Kelly's hay, you know, stuff just happens and it's hard and it's hard on morale. It's hard um, to keep focusing forward, but uh, it's just, it's an amazing feeling when you can just trust that God has something bigger and better and that there's a plan and there's a purpose in all of this and, or there's a miracle in it too. And uh, the other thing that we experienced, I didn't share this with you last week, but it's worth sharing. Um, I got all excited the other week, two weeks ago. Um, we had our first um, house viewing, and um, they called while I was live, and I had to break up my live and make that phone call. Well, what was really funny is um, the folks came back. They, they turned around somewhere on the lane. We know that much. I don't know where exactly, but... I don't know if it was too far back in, if they were afraid they were heading into deliverance or what, but that was our first and our only um, real interest in our property so far, and it just made us kind of laugh. I mean, it's definitely going to take a special person to want to enjoy this beauty um, the way we enjoy it. And it's so funny because we went out yesterday. Um, good morning, Joanna. Copper, leave her alone. Copper. Sorry. Um, we went out yesterday into the big city, the hour away city and, uh, like 40,000 people city and just looking at the houses, one on top of the other and the, the houses that are attached to one another and the big apartment complexes. And it just makes us like shiver. It's like, it's just so scary. <laughs> and I know that sounds funny. I lived that way already. 
and you know I've been there but at this point I can't go back there so it's just it's awesome to see how we progress in life you know I always say about being cautious when you look back but when you can look back and see where you've come and and see where you are and see how you've grown and it's just it is amazing and I, I am just I'm overflowing in so many ways right now you know um, there's a lot of things that we have to think about if this sells later in the year getting ourselves under roof being able to get out of here fast enough being able to get out of here because we have a small window between rainy seasons and but that's where trust comes in and just trusting him and just rolling and taking a day at a time and um, I got a, a call from Elizabeth who has offered her property to us further north in Idaho so that was a really refreshing call and her offer to us is such a blessing in that if this sells later in the year that we do have a roof over our heads if we can't build something for ourselves and that we don't have enough time so you know God slowly shows us glimpses to our future but he doesn't show us too much at a time so it really causes us to build on our faith and I just wanted to share all that this morning because I am overflowing because so many people come to me for prayers and we pray for so many people and what's really awesome is to be in the position where when these prayers are answered and miracles are happening and blessings are gifted and and good things are happening it's so amazing to kind of be in the front seat and just watch it all transpire so not only do I have my own blessings but I am blessed by everybody else's and it's just it's just so amazing it's so amazing good morning Charles glad you could join me I think the skeeters are getting me I'm starting to get itchy <laughs> but I wanted to do a little Q&A with you guys today because I do all the talking and a lot of times you guys are really joining in but I wanted to ask you guys some things you know what are your favorite summer activities while you are answering me on that question I'm gonna share a little bit of, of what I've been up to I packed all my books away um, except for my Bible my journal and a couple other books of importance and I realized in packing things I was foolish and and packed away um, some of my most favorite things and I was trying to keep all of those things out no leave the cat alone oh the cat is tormenting her and my camera's gonna go flying if it goes upside down she's like right by my tripod this is one of my favorite things to do this time of year I love going out and checking and seeing new plants leave her alone leave her alone and next thing you know I'm gonna go foot up because the cats underneath me <laughs> it's all in the adventure but this is one of my favorite books and so is this one in identifying plants in my area and also learning new plants um, we know many but being able to identify the plants um, in your surroundings knowing what you can use them for knowing what is edible um, to me is a really important thing because but it's also a passion so it's not part of my just my preparedness and I it's like a humdrum I got to do it I love doing it and I will share later in a photo uh, below um, of one of the blessings I had this week when I was out doing it uh, no you're gonna knock my camera over um, I was out with the dogs on Monday walking looking at the plants looking at the foliage and the grass and the different things around me and I walked right up on a fawn it was two feet away from me laying in the grass and thankfully the wind was at my at our backs which was in our favor because she was right next to it so it could have gotten pretty hairy really fast um, but I just turned them around and I went back. I took a real quick picture because I didn't want to spook it. Of course, if it jumped up and ran, copper, get over here. If it jumped up and ran, I would have had my hands full. Um, so thankfully nothing happened, but about three hours later I went back out and, and the mountain boy joined me and sure enough, it was still there. So I'm thinking it's mama is uh, probably got eaten by the coyotes or the wolves. Um, that it was laying there that long and I didn't see her anywhere but I got really good video footage and I got pictures of it and then it did eventually get up and run um, but it was probably the size of our healer and uh, wasn't brand new but it was it was young it was still fuzzy so it was really cool 
But being out and doing the things you enjoy doing is, is so priceless and, and another great way to renew ourselves. So now you guys have shared and I'm anxious to see. Tammy says we like to go to my aunt's place on uh, Flathead Lake. Awesome. You know, anything around water, rivers, lakes, the ocean is just so, is so renewing and just so, I can't even put words to that. It just, it just touches me in such an awesome way. I just, I feel really refreshed and it kind of steps me back in time. We did a lot with the ocean when I was a kid and uh, I, I really love being by the water. So I totally get that. Shelly says, camping with my family, gardening and putting down food. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. I can totally relate to that. Kelly says, walking in nature, taking a bike ride with my family, gardening and cooking outdoors. Yes, all nurturing for the soul. Diana says, having family and friends over for cookouts, gatherings and game nights. Awesome, awesome. Exactly. We had, Cammie is joining us today. We actually had her and her boyfriend over on Saturday and had such a good time. There's something about um, fellowshipping around the table with food. You know, it's just a comforting thing. And it's just so much fun when you're out with friends and family and just able to cultivate um, just amazing times and memories. I love it. Courtney says swimming and having barbecues with my family. Awesome. And notice, guys, it's all outdoors. So much of it is outdoors. And there is just so much to be said about our surroundings. Oh, awesome. Jay says, you find strength when you relinquish control. Trust God with all things and reset in that comfort. Amen. Amen. There is so much truth in that. And I gain, and, and it appears to me that all of you guys do the same thing. You get out doing your favorite things. And thank you for sharing that. Um, you get out and you're doing your favorite things. And it's just so refreshing. It, it fills us up. It, it renews us. It, it it's a rebuilding too, and it also gives us memories to look back on. But what we don't also understand is it's stepping stones. It creates us. It, it steps us into our future. It builds us. It helps us to find what we enjoy. And the more we try new things, the more we create in ourselves and, and in, in those around us the things that we enjoy and those memories. So my next question to you is, what are things in your life that you want to learn to do, um, try? I think it's really important for us all to always be um, recreating ourselves. You know, so many people I watch as they, as they age, they just kind of fall into their age and feel that they're old and they can't do things. And then there are a handful of people out there that are just renewing themselves and doing all this really awesome new stuff. Um, I just get so inspired by these 80 and 90 year old people that are lifting weights and riding bikes. I watched these guys, um, I would say they were in their early 70s, riding bikes on the train tracks and they were, um, they, they were, they have been traveling all over the world doing this. And they were um, riding by the Alps and uh, different mountains. I mean, it was just talk about back country and, and being in the openness and God's country. It was just amazing to watch. So that certainly inspired me to want to do that at some point in my life. But I would love to um, take on kayaking. Um, not necessarily in the rivers, but in the lakes and just to be able to get out there. We did that last summer a little bit. Um, in some flat, there was type of like, um, it was like a flat sit-in kind of um, kayak, but it wasn't the kind that you actually sit in. And uh, we had such a good time. I love doing new things. I think doing new things is really important for us. It keeps our brains functioning. It adds uh, new memories. It adds new skills which is another step into preparedness. Not everything we have to do is for preparedness, but the more we know and the more we um, learn, the better off we are when it comes to preparedness. But doing things for fun and for renewal, like Jay said, um, there's, so, there's so much that comes from it. 
Um, Tammy says, I want to learn a lot more about herbs and how to can with my pressure canner. I'm scared of it. Okay. And there's a lot of people that are scared of it. Um, it's actually a very easy process and I do have a video on that on our YouTube channel. Um, but there's a lot of different types of pressure canners. The older ones look extremely intimidating, but it's really an easy process. And learning those things that we are afraid of is also huge because that helps us in a lot of ways, a lot more than we realize. Stepping through our fears helps us to embrace more things. So I'm, I'm glad to hear that. But I love learning new things. I love doing new things. You know, we want to, you know, we have so many opportunities ahead of us in being able to kind of recreate ourselves. I'm going to move up here a little bit. My iPad is in the sun. There we go. And then I can see the screen better too because it's getting pretty bright. The sun's shifting. So, Ke ah, Kelly says, I am a beginning spinner, but look forward to learning to weave, to travel more so much to see right here in Montana, but also all around the U.S. I know, how about it? You know, there's so much we have here to, to see and to enjoy, and most of us haven't gotten out of the valley. I, I say that with great humor because when I moved, north where I met the mountain man in Pennsylvania. I moved back to where my parents were born and raised and uh, where my grandparents were born and raised. And you know, I got there and I'm an explorer. From the get-go, when I first got my driver's license, I took a map and, uh, you know, my money and I would go out for a day and just drive around. i get myself lost and find new places to go and find my way back. And I've always been that way. I'm an explorer. I love going to new places. I do the same thing in the woods. So to be able to do that, and, and when I got to this place, that's exactly what I was doing, just checking out the territory, what was around me and everything. And I asked my grandparents how to get somewhere one time, and they said they've never gone to that side of the valley or that over that mountain, you know, and it just cracks me up. They, they lived there their whole lives but never ventured out. And I think so many of us, you know, we want to see things, but we're afraid or uh, we feel we don't have the funding to do it. But a lot of these trips, like Kelly mentioned, don't cost a lot of money, especially if you're the outdoorsy type and you can camp, you know, camp for a couple days, then find a place to get a shower. You know, you can see a lot on a penny that way. So, yes, and we agree. Um, part of... Our future, we feel, is being a little bit more mobile, having a home base, but doing more and seeing more. Um, it's just, I don't feel like we have all the pieces yet. I just got attacked by the cat. I have my hand on the edge of the chair. Um, but we feel God leading us in that direction. And that's why I'm hoping I get to venture over to Kelly's because I was told when I get there I might get a spinning lesson and I'm really excited because that's something on my list too so that's really awesome learning how to do that and you use your own fiber she has the animals there on the farm so she's using her own fiber so it's really really awesome to be able to do those things and that kind of stuff just inspires me to death Shelly says I would love to learn to quilt I would love to do more pressure canning and le learn more about getting food stored awesome these are also valuable they're, they're valuable tools valuable things to know to be able to make our own clothing to be able to put away our own food to be able to make um, quilts for our bedding needs uh, I don't know about you guys but that's one thing that it's hard to find quality bedding anymore everything falls apart so quickly it's very disappointing um, and Glenn's grandmother made quilts and they are just gorgeous and that is something on my list too so awesome very awesome and Tammy says I have a great oh I have my great grandmother's canner yes yeah, so it has all those big things on it so it does look very intimidating I'm sure I know my mother had my grandmother's too and it was quite something Diana says learning how to cook exclusively with cast iron learning more about growing herbs with culinary medicinal uses and also selling seedlings very awesome very awesome. And yes, um, there is nothing better than cooking in cast iron and also um, being able to identify what is around us and using, you know, the medicinal herbs and, and having them on hand, learning how to dry them, learning when to harvest them. That is like such a passion for me. I've been delving into that for a long time and just as I continue to grow in that, I, I find more plants. So it's really, really awesome. And we have so many things in our yard and directly around us that are so useful and so beneficial. So 
it's exciting. Plus we are in a place where nothing is sprayed. So I'm also excited about that because that can be a real challenge depending where you are in the country. But awesome, awesome things. Kelly wants to learn how to knit. Awesome, because I will be producing and getting it out there shortly. I've filmed it already. I just got to put it together. Um, a video on how to knit. So, And that will be one of our free classes in the Academy coming soon. So I will be sure to make sure you are aware of that, Courtney. Knitting is fun. Ke uh, Shelly says, would love to travel around the island I live on. There is so much to see here why go any further as it costs so much to leave this island I imagine and and it's so funny you know just like I said you know we're, we're in these places and we're always so busy we don't venture to go exploring and that was one of the things that we were really blessed to be able to do in the beginning while we were waiting for things to happen here we went exploring we went um, panning for gold um, just hiking. There were times we hiked 20, 21 miles in a day um, just exploring the countryside and the different mountains and the different areas out here which is fantastic which also opens up opportunities to scout for our hunting needs and, and just to find all kinds of really cool stuff. We found a lot of logging camps. So this is awesome. I'm so glad to see you guys chiming in and, and your aspired um, things to do are, are so valuable. They are such valuable tools and as you explore those, it's just a given that we start adding more to our list. I hope you guys have all seen the movie The Bucket List. That is such a great movie. And um, I encourage you to watch it if you um, feeling, or, you know, you're not inspired um, with what you could be doing in life. Because there's so, so much that we could be doing and so many things that we can do inexpensively. I mean, you know our circumstances. And still, I say to the mountain man all the time, our circumstances don't have to stop us from having joy in our life, happiness, and still doing things. So the other day, I think it was Sunday. Is it Sunday? Yeah, it was Sunday. We got out for a nice hike and just went a little, you know, to do a little exploring and shooting our guns looking for plants so and last night we sat by our chiminea and just had a, a fire before we crashed for the night being that we were in town I swear going to town is like exerts more energy than running a five mile marathon it's crazy it just zaps you I for us it does anyway I I always say that Kelly Kelly says we should never stop learning until we die exactly exactly um the other thing I want to ask you guys is what is your favorite garden vegetable and what meals do you make from it? I love fresh tomatoes and that is one of the hardest things to find out here. We were spoiled by farmers markets um, all over the place in Pennsylvania and out here not so much and oftentimes the farmers markets here just bring produce from the grocery store so you still have that pithy no tasting tomato. So we were really spoiled. And our garden here um, does really well. We get tomatoes, but they never turn. They're always green. So the greenhouse is the key thing out here. And eventually, wherever we land, that will be one of the first things we are building. Um, but a fresh tomato. I could just eat it like an apple. I enjoy tomato sandwiches with some mayonnaise, salt and pepper, and some really good sprouted bread. Um, I love zucchinis also. Uh, you can do so much with zucchinis. I love to be able to stuff zucchinis and tomatoes with either tuna fish or um, salmon. And uh, those, are, those are my favorites. Um, but I love to have a really good crisp salad, fresh salad from the garden. Tammy shared a picture of her first salad from the garden um, the other day. And there's just nothing better than being able to pull stuff off the vine and just nibble on it. The, um, oh, I just love doing that. My, I remember growing up with my grandparents. My, my pap grew peanuts and uh, we'd, we'd get those out of the ground and uh, just being able to eat the fresh stuff right out of the garden. So I'm, we're both really anxious to be able to to the charm. We are inside. My equipment got too warm outside, so hopefully you guys will pop back on and join me here. It got, it got very warm out there. I started in the shade. 
Hello, Tammy. Hello, Kelly. I think my equipment got too hot. Shelly. Oh, good. You guys are all joining me again because that was a good conversation. It just got too hot out there. And my equipment shut off, so I'm inside and trying to cool off myself. It got really warm. All right. Yes, I'm back, Diana. And you are back. Awesome. Okay. So here we go. So the next question is, and, and um, good answers on the vegetables. There is nothing better than a fresh vegetable out of um, the garden. There just isn't. And if you don't have a garden, um, find somebody that does. They often have extra. Um, look for farmer's markets. Look for farms that have farm stands. But, oh my goodness, there is just no comparison. I, I absolutely hate getting tomatoes in the grocery store. Even when they're vine ripened, they're just nasty. Good morning, Chad. So, the next question is, what is your favorite food to can? Now, some of you have mentioned that you'd like to get more into canning, um, but I think my favorite thing to can is our chili sauce, which you can find the recipe on our website at treyerwilderness.com. Um, but I think the reason I like that one the most is because typically, that was the mountain boy and my project. Um, and the mountain man would get involved too. But that was one of the things that we would just take on and do, and it was all day long. Um, my friend Gudrun has joined us on several occasions because we have done like, um, I think the most we did was six batches at one time. So it was like my whole kitchen was just filled with fresh vegetables. Um, but I love canning with my son. I love um, doing that process. We just always have such a good time. You know, um, some people get bored of chopping and cutting, but it's just been one of those really awesome memory makers for us. We'll listen to music. We'll listen to podcasts. Um, we used to listen to... Um, Oh, I just lost my train of thought on that. Um, Focus on the Family has it. It's uh, a broadcast for kids, but we used to listen to that too. But just spending that time and talking about life, it was, it's just been really awesome for us. And But I love canning everything. Um, and I'm always thankful for the company. It's always fun to have people in the kitchen when you're doing things like that. Um, so let's see what you guys have to say. Diana says applesauce, but I haven't had a lot of experience with canning to this point, but that's okay. And and you um, so far have done some, so that's awesome. And applesauce is good. Applesauce can be used for so much. Kelly says spaghetti sauce, apples, and berries. Yum. Do you put pink lozenges in with your apples, or what do you put in with your apples when you can your apples? Um, I'm, I'm curious, Kelly. Um, Tammy says, do pickles count? I love our dill pickles. Absolutely pickles count. That's awesome. And yes, that's been another fun one. The Mountain Boy is a pickle fiend. Um, so we do lime pickles and we do dill pickles. So, um, and we do massive batches of those. My canning shelves right now have a lot of pickles. Um, but it's fun, you know, to learn all the different uses for things like applesauce we put in with our meats and my pear jelly and my apple butter, you know, we put in with our meats and our roasts and when we fry a burger we do that. Um, pickles we put on pizza and you can chop up and make your own tartar sauce and uh, we, use, we use pickles for all kinds of different things. But yes, and then let's see, Shelly says, I love canning bread and, oh, bread and butter zucchini and tomato chutney. Awesome. Awesome. We had something called Chow Chow. It is a Pennsylvania Dutch um, item, and it is cauliflower, carrots, zucchini. It's just like this mishmash. Uh, lima beans are in it of, of vegetables that you pickle, and um, that was another really good one when I was growing up. I have not made that myself yet. Um, Kelly says, I've been dehydrating a lot more while using canned goods. Yeah, I enjoy, good morning, Holly. I enjoy dehydrating, um, and that's something that I want to get more involved in. Um, for us, I think the freeze dryer is going to be the big thing for us. Um, being able to freeze dry our food enables us to enjoy our lifestyle so much more in that we can just pick it up and go and head out to the woods and have lightweight food to carry and 
really good wholesome meals. So that is something that we are hoping to do more of in the future is actually freeze drying. But dehydrating is awesome too. And just having that stuff on hand. Oh, and we talked about the homestead food. So um, I only add water and a little lemon juice. Oh, okay. Interesting. Some people put pink lozenges in with their apples. My, that's, that could also be a Pennsylvania Dutch thing, um, but that was something that our families both did. Um, so, let me see. Kelly says, would love a freeze dryer. Too expensive now. I know, I agree. We, it's just on our list, um, you know, and as we have money moving forward, you know, this, this whole plan was to be debt free. My illness kind of threw things off. So moving forward, um, we are hoping to be completely debt free and just function as we can, purchase things as we can and just enjoy life. Life is too short and our needs are little, really. So now I have a question. What is something new that you wanna try this summer? And also, um, mention what you would like to try this summer, but things that are on your list that you want to try, that, that are for your future too. If it's not for this summer and you don't have anything for the summer, what are things you want to do in your future? What is something you want to embrace? Um, for me, I mentioned kayaking. Um, I love riding bike. That is something that I have greatly enjoyed and I really want to get back into that. I really want to strengthen my legs. So driving and riding these mountains is something that I really want to start doing in my early mornings and hope to be doing that real soon. I have a friend with a really good bike and he is selling it so that is on my list too. Um, the other thing that we want to do that we didn't do, I had a Sportster before we came out here and I had her for nine years. It was a really really awesome thing for me um, as a single mom it gave me the ability to really um, find myself and just uh, let the wind go through my hair and just breathe in God's country it's like just such a different view from on a motorcycle and um, we sold that when we came out here and the joke was that um, I would replace it with a mule and that never happened we had a horse for a while but we didn't get the mule but that is one thing that we would like to get back into. And one of the things we wanted to do before we sold it was just put our bedrolls on the back and just go and camp different places. And we were always camping, but we didn't do it off the motorcycle. So that is something that I would really like to do in my future too. I want to be that old lady going down the road with the white hair and a ponytail and, and riding on her motorcycle. I'm okay with that. I can still be a homesteading motorcycle babe, right? <laughs> but anyway, that's just one of the things we would like to do. Um, let me see here. We have... Kelly says, then I can use them in anything for pies to cakes. And she was referring to her apples. That's awesome. Oh, there's nothing better. Oop. There is nothing better than apple crisps and apple pies and we actually cut up apples and put it in with our meat too we really do a wide variety of different things with our meats we don't follow recipes either we just kind of concoct but um, Shelly says I do not add anything to my apples when I, I make applesauce okay camping in the off season is one of the things that Shelly wants to do so like winter camping that is fun that is fun um, visiting historical sites around the state awesome and you guys have a lot of them more time to concentrate on spinning quilting and soap making awesome that's what Kelly said uh, good morning Janet being able to do those new things is just so it's so refreshing and I, it just nurtures me in a lot of ways it also encourages me to take on more things and not to be afraid to embrace things one of the other things that I really look forward to doing is starting to really delve into making a lot more leather goods. Um, not just for myself, but for sale and jewelry as well. But I look forward to using my Paps treadle, um, his, his heavy duty leather treadle uh, sewing machine. It needs some loving um, right now. Um, 
but that's one of the things I look forward to. And a lot of times for us, um, things like spinning um, and the things that Kelly mentioned are things that we would do in the winter months. And I'm sure that's what's going to happen for Kelly too. Um, our, your summer months often have so many things crammed into them. And that's what makes it really tricky to be able to do new things. But if we learn to schedule ourselves and not lose ourselves on social media and, and schedule time to do these things and, and to have a list of the things we want to accomplish and if it, it requires funding that we, you know, we set that aside and kind of start adding to that fund of fun things to do. Because sadly, most things do cost money in one way or another. Um, but being able to focus on those things and make them a priority is important. I really, really think so. Um, ooh, you guys are commenting a lot. I love it. Shelly says, yes, winter camping would be fun. It is a lot of fun. Um, the Mountain Man has done it a lot. I've done it a little. Um, I got sick and we had some plans to go do it more and I haven't ventured out. But this coming year, we tried to this year and things were just crazy with our house. So that's on our list too. But I love winter camping. Um, I love summer camping. I just, I love being out in the woods. We do a lot of hammock camping as well. Um, Kelly says, oh, I'm so interested in carving. Did somebody say, so? oh yes. Did somebody else say something about carving or are you just adding that Kelly? I thought maybe I missed it. Carving things is fun. We do a lot of whittling. That's just, we actually do that when we're out camping. I also took my elk ivory with me the last time we went camping and was working on polishing that and getting all the um, rough edges off of it to use it for jewelry. Also, Alexa and I want to start seeing things to sell. To sell. Awesome. That is really awesome. I know you are talking about craft things um, that you're going to be making, Tammy. Diana says, just want, no wait, just want to get on a homestead. For now, we need to be doing and learning what we can while in a rental. Yeah, and you know, it's, it's like our future. I don't know what our future's gonna bring. I don't know where we're going to end up. It's, to me though, that's exciting. Um, I know that we'll either be in a tent and building something for ourselves, or probably on this ranch up north for a while to get us started. Um, and those transitional periods are hard, but it's really awesome, like you said, when you can learn while you're in those places so that when you are able to advance out of there, you have more knowledge. Priceless, absolutely priceless. Tan uh, Kelly says, yes, look forward to winter to have more time to do these things. I know, that's, that's just it. But winters are such a slow time. There isn't as much to do with the exception of moving snow usually, um, for us anyway. Our animals are all gone, so um, we do enjoy the winter months to be able to really um, educate ourselves on things and learn new, new projects. Kelly says, I'd be a good customer. Would you make aprons? Oh, awesome. She's replying to Tammy. We can make aprons. I've seen the clothing that Tammy makes for her daughters, the dresses and stuff, and they're just they're darling. It's absolutely, those are absolutely awesome skills. And the thing is, those are things that we can do to make money from our homesteads, to give us joy, and to be able to gift others that don't have those talents. So it's learning these skills can be a real asset in the future. You know, you hate to plan that things are gonna fall apart, but our, our country's in a weird place. So, you know, being prepared and being in the mindset that that is a potential, um, and learning how to do these new things. Three is a charm, here we go. Hopefully you guys will jump back on and join me here. Won't be on much longer, but this is the important stuff that I wanted to share today, so hopefully you guys will jump back on. I lost internet, so I don't know. The enemy's fighting me today. <laughs> but what a fabulous Q&A that we had today. Um, hello again. Lost my internet, so this is pretty crazy, but we'll try this again. Okay, I see, <laughs> I know, take three, right? I know. Aye. 
I must have something of importance to say that he's not liking today because he's he's fighting me. I lost internet completely. <laughs> All right, so as I was saying, and I don't know I don't know that you guys could hear me because I probably froze. Um, you know, one of the most valued things in my life are my friends and um, and my family next to God and. Uh, I just feel so thoroughly blessed in my in my lifetime to have found such tremendous true friends. Um, we all have friends. I have lots of friends, but I feel so tremendously blessed by the really wholesome friendships that I do have in my life. And you know, they come in small spurts. Um, and, and they are certainly um, the diamond in the rough. They are, they are the needle in the haystack. They are hard to come by. But I wanted to encourage you guys today that if you don't have those kind of people in your life, to pray to God for him to guide you to them or to bring them into your life. Because there is nothing more wholesome to me than having friends that always have your back, that you can be yourself around, that you can genuinely ask for prayer and know that they are praying for you. And just to have that heartfelt feeling of just knowing that, you know, you might have just met these people or you've known them forever, but regardless, the feeling is the same. And it's just a really awesome thing when these people come into your life. And I feel truly blessed. God has greatly blessed me with some very priceless people. And in addition to that, living life when each day you, you never know what you're going to get. It's like a box of chocolates. And to know that you have people that you can reach out to and and... They are there for you. They are there to pray for you. Um, and to see the power of prayer um, is, is such an incredibly powerful thing. So if you don't have those people in your life, I encourage you to pray for them. The other thing is if you do have those people in your life, um, I, have, I have created a, a prayer group with some of my most valued friends. And... I have to say that is one of the most wholesome things in my life right now is to um, be able to have them there a message away. Um, and what's amazing is none of these people are directly near me. But to have these people there and to um, be able to have this group of really close-knit friends um, is really really powerful so if you have people in your local community um, that you truly value as friends to be able to um, really create a wholesome group of people and, and pray pray about it because to have those group of people that can commune together and there isn't nitpicking and there isn't fighting and there isn't backstabbing and that's that's a hard thing in life there's so much of that and we've all experienced it we've all dealt with it but to have a group that you can commune with that is is there and is wholesome there is so much value in that and I want to encourage you guys um, there is so much power in that and I, I want to encourage that I feel extremely blessed to have that and I felt the need to mention that because those are the kind of relationships that can bring us through some really rocky spots in life. And it's a, it's a special thing when you can create a group of people that, um, and I feel that we have that here, um, that there's no judging. It's just, it's just a wholesome friendship, a, a deeply valued family, even though you're not blood related. Um, there's just so much value in that and I wish that for everybody and I just wanted to mention that you know I mentioned it last week we have the ability to pray for the things we want in our lives and that doesn't necessarily mean material things that can be the priceless gift of friendships 
the gift of community, the gift of communion amongst community. Um, and sometimes those are the things that are more valuable than any material thing we could ever ask for. That is the kind of thing that will get us through um, some of the craziest times in our lives, but add value. Um, it will nurture us. It will nurture each other. Um, it will bless us in ways that we never could have imagined. Um, to be able to see growth in each other, to see um, our rawness, our, our, our weakest spots, and to see us grow from those places. Um, there's so much in it. And, you know, this is something that we seek in our churches, and sometimes that's really difficult. And sometimes our churches fail. We've talked about that. But I encourage you to deeply pray for these special people to come into your lives because I feel tremendously blessed by the ones in mine. And, and I feel that that is something, you know, I mentioned it last week, we forget that we can pray for the smallest of things. Um, one of my clients, um, who is also a very um, godly woman, mentioned that she just struggled so much during her devotions and never could find the time. And she prayed to God that she would have an extra half an hour in her day, in her morning, to be able to do devotions. And all of a sudden, and she was a person that could not wake up in the morning. She struggled to wake up with her alarm when it went off. And all of a sudden, after that prayer, she started waking up a half an hour before her alarm would go off. And she felt refreshed and could just jump out of bed. So God does answer those prayers, those minute little prayers, you know, that seems so simplistic that we forget that we can ask for. Those are the kind of prayers that he answers and those are the kind of prayers that give us a feeling of um, probably our greatest joy, like the moose in our yard um, a couple weeks ago. Um, it was really tremendous um, to see that moose and know that God just answered that small prayer. And what's funny is he answers these enormous prayers for me and they touch me, but not like that little prayer did. So it's just funny. Good morning, Tammy Price. Glad to have you joining us. I haven't seen you in a while, and I know you are busy, but thank you for joining. Um, Tammy says, so thankful for praying friends, especially last night. Yeah, you know, it's just an amazing thing to have that closeness, and I am, I am so tremendously blessed. And, you know, it's just, it's just a gift. It's a gift. In life, I've had, I've had people come and go in my life. I've had people that, you know, shown themselves as friends and um, just totally diss us. So you have those different walks in life. But when you know that these people come into your life, there is just that feeling of belonging, like feeling of connection. It's just something that you feel. It's kind of, I hate to use this analogy, but it's kind of like a wedding dress when you know that you've tried it on and it's just that perfect fit. And I pray that for you guys because um, through my prayerful friends, we have seen so, so many miracles worked over this last week. And that's what I'm heading into is, you know, the power of prayer is huge. And I mentioned it earlier when I was in the first segment of this part three, how it is just amazing to be in a seat. I just feel like I have the best seat in the house where I am just seeing this global action of God in, in my friends, in my family, in their families, and just watching how God is working, watching how God is using people. It's just so amazing. And I, it just, that is what is, that is where it's at. It's like, you know, we've got, we've had struggle, we've had, we have struggles. We just had such a tremendous problem with our vehicle and it was extremely expensive, but God blessed us with the money to be able to do that just at the right time. You know, his timing is perfect. Always, always, always his timing is perfect. And, um, Tammy mentioned that because she had a daughter that, um, had some, health issues last night that were really, really scary. And um, God answered prayer there. And it's just, it's, it's a comforting feeling to know that in your crisis moments that you can reach out to people and know they are praying. And guys, there is such a tremendous thing. It's a truth in the Bible that says when three or more are gathered together, God is present. It's not that our single prayers aren't answered. 
Not at all. And I don't want people to be fearful of that. Our prayers are answered as we ask for them. God hears everything. God, God, is, God is always there. And he is omnipresent. And the beautiful thing, though, is to see the benefits of three or more gathered together and see how powerful it truly is. My, like I mentioned earlier, my mother-in-law, her mother, our Glenn's grandmother, my grandmother, and myself were praying last week. And we were fasting and praying um, steadfast for actually for my family. And it was quite amazing to see. We were, we were uprooting the enemy big time. And, you know, there is great power there. There is, you know, when you are making him quake and you are making him act, there is great power there. And um, we've been praying for Jenny and Justin, for Diana, and we have seen tremendous miracles there. God is working tremendously. We have been praying for Shelly and Sarah, and we have been seeing tremendous miracle there and God moving there. Um, it has just been amazing. We were praying for Charles, and Charles's health is coming around. We've been praying for Charles to help find a person to take over his home. We found them, and they are en route um, to the new location, their new home. So I want to lead into asking you guys for prayers. We need prayers for Jenny and Justin. We need prayers for Hope this week. We need continued prayers for Sarah. We need prayers for Diana and Craig. We need prayers for Justin and Heather in their travels. Um, they started on Monday. They didn't even make it out of Idaho and ran into struggles. They were in Montana yesterday with struggles. So they definitely need a hedge of protection over them on their travels. Um, this is a family of three with a baby on the way, which is actually due in July. So prayers are greatly appreciated there. Good morning, Miss Marla. And... Uh, God's timing is always, always perfect. You know, we, even with us with our home, you know, we would love for it to have sold the day after we listed it, but it's in God's hands. And when you give something to God, you've got to trust his timing and you've got to be willing to accept his timing, even though it's hard, even though it, it's not when we wanted it, even though we have to wait, his timing is perfect. And sometimes, Sometimes his timing could be years, and I know that that's really hard. We just surf that. My friend Marla, who just joined us, has surfed that. But the rewards are great. I mean, incredibly great. When he answers our prayers and his timing, you will be awed at the rewards and awed at his timing and awed at how everything lined up and being able to see his hand the whole way through. It's worth the wait even though it's hard and it can be really 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 hard taking us to our weakest moments taking us to our knees taking us to where we have nothing left to give but his timing is perfect I want to read a couple things to you and this is these are shared from Kim's page Kim and Martin um, it was 118 days that he is in a coma so we need to continue to pray for miracles for both Kim and Martin and the family. Um, it, she's, you know, very, very transparent. It's hard. The kids are having a hard time. It's been a long time without their dad and, their, and her husband in the picture and to see him in his state. But she's hanging on to every blessing. And that is the key thing when we are walking through these trials is to hang on to the blessings. So this was shared off of her page. These were just really awesome and really touched me and really expressed how I feel about life, about everything that we've been walking, is God takes us by the hand and whispers, no matter what I've, no matter what, I've got this. I've got you and I'll hold on to you forever. That was one of the things shared by Lisa Tierkirst. And this is, was shared by MyBible.com. God doesn't give us what we can handle. God helps us handle what we are given. And you've got to just trust that he is there. You know, I talk to a lot of people, and one of the biggest struggles is that they don't feel God's there. They don't feel God's listening. They're afraid he's not hearing. Trust me, Papa hears everything. Papa is there, and sometimes... Sometimes in our struggles, we have to wait for other people 
that are close to us to hear God, to feel God, for the Holy Spirit to take over them, for them to learn lessons. So sometimes our struggles can be really hard and they aren't always our struggles. They might be people closest to us or around us. And that can be hard too. It can be really hard because we can't control anybody else. We can't change anybody else. Good morning, Lori. But we can pray. And there is so much power in prayer. If you haven't seen the movie War Room, I truly encourage you to, to see that movie. Another really good movie is Mountaintop. You can find that at pureflix.com. That is a fabulous movie on prayer and on faith and um, just trusting God. And I, I've actually watched that twice in like the last three weeks. It's a really awesome movie. So I encourage you to watch that too. This was one of today's devotions that I thought I would share with you. Stay calmly conscious of me today. Remember, this is, okay, this is written as though God is talking to you. So this is Papa speaking to you. Stay calmly conscious of me today, no matter what. Remember that I go before you as well as with you into the day. Nothing takes me by surprise. I will not allow circumstances to overwhelm you so long as you look to me. And a lot of times that is our struggle because we look away from him and kind of panic or try to own or try to take care of things ourselves. I will help you cope with whatever the moment presents. Collaborating with me brings blessings that far outweigh all your troubles. Awareness of my presence contains joy that can endure all eventualities. So remember that when you are walking things out, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You know, I think of this verse, it's from Psalms. I think of that often when I'm out in the woods, you know, I feel the nudge. We talked about it in the beginning in part one. Today was a broken up session. So if you're going to rewatch, there'll be part one, two, and three. If you're watching this on YouTube, it's all contained together. You'll just see the broken up uh, process. But God leads us. And when we feel nudged to be outside, there's a reason for it. When we feel inspired to be outdoors and to do things outdoors, that is him leading us to the green pastures, to walk by still waters. You know, he nurtures our soul. He renews us and he knows what it takes for each of us to renew us and to guide us and to strengthen us. So as you are enjoying your summer and you are enjoying the things you enjoy most, remember where that comes from. Remember that you are being guided and that he is present. Those are the things and those are the places where we are going to feel his presence the most. I truly believe that. Like I said, Monday I was out walking and I ended up not two feet away from a fawn laying in the grass. I love where I live, but I love my life because God is ever present. God is there. These things don't happen just because I don't feel there's coincidence. I don't feel there's luck. I just feel that's the ever presence of God. And that's an amazing thing and it's an amazing feeling and it's amazing when you can stay calmly conscious of Him and focus solely on him, that whatever you are going through, you feel peace because you are focusing on him and not your circumstances. So just keep that in mind. It's just, for me, uh, our, our life is crazy. You know, I got an email from my aunt and uncle. I don't know what is gonna happen with my home. But I'm not focusing on that. I'm focusing on my day to day. I'm enjoying my beautiful home that my husband built with his hands and the blessings that God has given him with his talents. I'm enjoying that every day. I'm enjoying the peace God brings to my day. I'm enjoying the small beauties that I get to see throughout my day that he puts in my path. And I'm enjoying the precious people that he leads to me, leads me to, and puts in my, in my life. That is a blessing beyond anything. I am just truly, I just am overflowing today with just the blessings he gives me and that I see because I focus on him. So I want to give you guys that 
and I am going to say a prayer. It sounds to me like there might be some disruption coming here. It sounds like my guys are on their way this way, direction, so if the dogs start carrying on, that is why. But before I lose my internet connection again or the enemy pops me off of uh, live, I'm going to say our prayer and get you guys back to your busy summers. Papa, I just thank you for being mm. present in our lives. I thank you for all that you do. I thank you for all that you do in our lives. I thank you for the blessings. I thank you for your hand in all of our chaos as you work us through it in your perfect timing. I thank you for what you're going to do in each of our lives. I lift up all of our prayer requests to you today so that you can handle them as you see fit. And we just look onward to see the miracles and blessings you're going to produce there. I thank you for the many people that join us here, watch the replay. I just ask that you show yourself in their lives. And I just thank you for the abundance of miracles and blessings you are showing. But your perfect timing is everything. And just working in us every day to learn to fully trust you and to mature and increase our faith in you. And I just thank you more than anything for what you are going to do in our lives because what you have planned is better than anything we could have ever imagined. And I just thank you for your hand and in the lives of everyone here. And just thank you for your love and mercies. And we ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Okay, guys. I predicted that one, didn't I? I could just hear the four-wheeler starting up. So with that being said, and because my house is going to get crazy, I wish you guys a fabulous rest of your day, a fabulous rest of your week, and I just thank you for being a part of this and our community, and I love you all dearly, and look forward to seeing you next week. May God bless you all. God bless. <laughs>